This is about using conditionals in Excel without actually programming. So we're not writing macros, but we're just going to use conditionals. So um, if you're doing something complex, it's better to write a macro, to write a program. It'll be easier to understand. But for simple conditionals, um, Excel gives us a really nice way to create some nice spreadsheets. So I'm working with an example here. It's called the conditionals example, and it's posted on this site. And I've got it open over here. So I'm going to be referring to it as we go through this. So what we have here is um, a, an imaginary real estate company, and these are the sales entries. Uh, so the name, the neighborhood, the price, and the closing date for the sale. Okay. So first of all, if I look down here at cell C18, this shows you the average uh, price for all the sales in the sheet. And how did I get that? Well, I took the sum of column um, C7 to C16, so I use the sum function in Excel as a numerator, and then I divide it by the count, the number of things uh, between C7 and C16, and that gives me the average. Now, I did that because I want to show you um, using some other functions in the same way, but there is actually an average function, and let's look at that. So I did that in cell C19 here. You can see it's the average going from C7 to C16. Okay, now that works fine if we want to know something like the total average of all the sales. But what if we want to know the average for one salesperson? So let's consider John M, and we're going to look at cell C20 here. Now if you look at the formula, it's a sum if. Uh, the first, it has three arguments. The first one is the um, part of the spreadsheet that we're going to use as our condition. And in this case, it's column A from 7 to 16. And our condition here is that it matches John M. So I just want the rows that match John M. And I'm going to take the actual data from column C between C. 7 and C16, so that's over here. So what this says is, get all the entries in column C where you have John M in column A and add them up. And that's what I get here, that's the total. Okay, fine. Now what if I want John M's average? Let's look at the formula for that. I'm, I'm taking the thing that I just computed, which was the sum if, and there's a corresponding count if that works the same way. Only this time we only need two arguments. The, the column, the area where we want to count, which is A7 to 16, and the thing we want to match, which is John M. And so I counted how many and I divided to get the sum. Now there is actually an average if as well, but I'm going to keep going uh, with this so we learn about more things. Okay. Uh, as another example, let's get the total sales for Laurelhurst. So here I'm doing another sum if, but here I'm using column B, which gives the neighborhoods. I'm finding all the ones that match the entry Laurelhurst, um, and then I'm getting the data from column C and adding those up. So you can see it's very similar, only now I'm doing neighborhood instead of agent's name. And in the same way, I can do the average for the neighborhood dividing the one that I just made by count if, and here I'm counting in column B the number that match Laurelhurst. Okay, now so far so good, and let me catch up on my slides over here. Now suppose we want to have more than one condition. For example, suppose we want to know about John M's sales in Laurelhurst. So we have John M and we also have Laurelhurst. There's a way Excel has built in to handle this kind of thing if we want an AND, if we want both conditions to apply. And this is called count ifs and some ifs. So take, let's take a look here. 
Um, here's John M's Laurel Hurst Total. Now here things are in a little different order, but it's the same idea we've been working with. So with the sum ifs, first I'm going to take um, the sum. I'm going to say where the numbers are coming from, and they're coming from C7 to C16. And then I have pairs of entries where I give my conditions. So the first pair is, all right, I want to look in column A in the same range and find the things that match John M. And then my second condition is look in column B and find the things that match Laurelhurst. So I'm doing both of those things. And, and to ch you can check this and add it up, and you'll see you'll get this total. So these are John M's sales in Laurelhurst. And as you might expect, there's a corresponding count ifs. And here, um, I don't need the first parameter, which was where I was getting the numbers to add up because I'm just counting. So here I just give my pairs of arguments. So I'm taking the thing I just made, the sum, and I'm dividing by counting uh, from column A, I want it to match John M, and in column B, I want it to match Laurelhurst. And that's how I get this. Okay. And this slide explains it. Um, and you've got these notes to look at if you want to. Now, suppose instead of that, we want something that's kind of an or. Um, it's a little tricky You can, because I want to know the sum of the things sold in uh, two different neighborhoods, so Irvington and Alameda. And you might think of this as an and, but logically what we're talking about here, uh, it could be Irvington or Alameda in this column. So what I did here, um, there's different ways to do it, but I chose one way so I could show you another uh, feature. I, I'm giving a formula here, and it's an if, and th this is the built-in if of Excel. Now this if takes three arguments. The first one is a condition, and it's just a Boolean condition. The second one is the result if the condition is true, and the third one is the result if the condition is false. So what I'm doing here, I'm going to put a yes in this column if my condition is true, and a no in this column if the condition is false. And what is my condition? It says that B7 equals Alameda or B7 equals Irvington. And you can see that in the Excel version, the or comes in front. It's not in the middle of the two things, so it's not X or Y. It's or parentheses x comma y, but it's the same idea. So if either one of these is true, I'm going to get a yes, otherwise I'll get a no. All right, and this is logically the or, and you, and you can see right here, you can check. Here's Irvington, here's Alameda, we got yeses. Here's Irvington, here's Alameda, we got yeses. We got no for everything else. Okay, so now to get the total, here, I want the total for these things, um, for Irvington and Alameda. So what I'm going to do is a sum if. I'll use column E here that I just made for my condition. And I want, when it matches yes, then I'm going to add in the corresponding number from column C. And you can see the result here. So that's how I do that. You have and or not available inside of Excel using this kind of format um, to use to make whatever conditionals you want to make. Okay, and this is going over it. Um, the one thing, these are quite general. You can make nested ifs if you want to. Uh, let's look back at that. Don't want this sum if. Let's look over here. So with an if like this, um, I could have a nested if inside here if I wanted to, or a nested if in one of these. That's okay, but you can see it would get extremely hard to read. And that's why I'm saying if it's at all complicated, better to write a program and use a nice structured if, like um, what we've been working with. Okay, now there's a few other ways to use conditions, and one is conditional formatting. So um, there's a conditional formatting button in the, in the uh, home tab, and I'm pointing to it here. So let's come over here, and we're on home, and here's conditional formatting. 
So if I open it up, you can see there's all kinds of um, things I can use, little arrows. There's a ton of this stuff, which you can have fun with and explore. And I can make rules to govern my conditional formatting. So one thing I can do is data bars, and I did that here. So what data bars do, does is it just puts um, a little colored bar in the cells, and the bar is bigger when the total is bigger. So you can see for the smallest one here, it's quite small, and for the biggest one here, it's quite big. So it gives you a visual backup to your numbers that lets someone see at a glance where the biggest one is. You can also use formulas. Um, column A shows an example where I wanted to figure out um, where any sales were bigger than the average, and then I would highlight the name of the person in column A when that was true in that row. So it turned out there was only one. Here's a formula, and um, it says if C7... This, notice this one is a relative address, is bigger than C23, which is the Laurelhurst average, then I'm going to, um, and I also want B7 to equal Laurelhurst, and that's my condition. So if both of those are true, then there was a sale in Laurelhurst that was bigger than the average for Laurelhurst. I'm going to highlight my cell here. Okay, so let's see, S suppose, um, let's go to the rule manager here, and, oh, it's not in here, for current selection, let's show for this worksheet. Okay, here we go, and I've got a couple of formulas, um, and this is the one we're talking about. And if I click on it here, sorry, I missed it. Uh, here it is. So I just hover on it, and you can see the formula. And um, I just wrote this formula, and then I applied it to every row. So if you wanted to highlight, like, the salespeople that were above average or something like that. I mean, you can think of all kinds of possible applications for something like this. Uh, so th the thing is, to really get how this works, you have to try it. So I keep saying this, but it's really true. Go ahead and try it. Uh, try writing a few for yourself so you see how they work. So either play around with my spreadsheet or make one yourselves to understand the concepts. All right.